Okay, in this video I'm going to take a look at um, several interesting options that you can now do with the UV Master plugin. I was talking to Paul Gabori uh, about the fact that uh, as a LightWave user we don't have access to um, GoZ natively and he was mentioning um, that GoZ is uh, a file format that has all kinds of additional options uh, into it and one of the interesting things that he noted was that um, when you go to use UV Master it's actually utilizing a GoZ file and that kinda got me thinking about some of the interesting things that we can do so I'm gonna share that with you in this video. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the demo head and I'm gonna go over and dock Z plugins to the tray. I'll open up UV Master and I'll choose work on clone that way we can start off with an object that has no subdivision uh, levels. Because I already know that I want to unwrap this and keep the seam in the back I'm just gonna turn on control painting. I'll attract the seams to the back of the object and uh, with the little blue line and then we'll turn over to protect and we'll protect the front. We'll also attract that just a little higher in the back as well. just protect it a little more on the sides. Okay, let's go ahead and unwrap this and then we'll flatten it and check the results. So we'll flatten it, unflatten, let's find out why, oops, let's find out why the UV is, there we go, <laughs> apparently flipping. All right, everything's good. So now at this point, let's let's just sort of see uh, some of the things that are currently possible with this. We're going to go ahead and copy the UVs. We'll go back over to our regular demo head, and then we'll paste the UVs onto this. So we'll do paste UVs. Now, at this point, the UV should be on this model. And in ZBrush 4, we now have the option to go into our UV map section and choose this option called Morph. UV. That's going to show us the actual UV layout and if we hit shift F to show the wireframes we can now see that this uh, UV map has been applied to this object. Now sometimes while you're working with your object it's just more useful or more beneficial to be able to work on a flattened version uh, because when we are dealing with the full three-dimensional version uh, we have to work around the object if we wanted to paint let's say goggles from the front to the back or any sort of uh, poly paint or deformation work. So sometimes it's very helpful to be able to work on the flattened object. So if we morph the UV in this case, you'll notice that we actually have the ability to poly paint this. So I'm going to switch the wireframes off for right now and I'll switch over to a red color and then make sure deformation is off, poly paint mode is on. You'll see that we can actually begin to poly paint directly onto this mesh. Now that's interesting, but what you'll notice if we exit out of Morph UV, the poly paint just goes right away. So to work around this, we can attempt to copy the poly paint back to a texture map, and then from there pull it from the texture map back to the poly paint again if we so desire. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll paint onto the mesh, and then we'll come over to texture and we'll do new from poly paint. But one of the things you're going to notice at this point is the option for new from poly paint is now grayed out. It's not an option. We can't click on it. And even if we do something like new texture, it's still not going to give us that option. So ultimately, while we can paint on the model, we really can't keep the poly paint. Same thing holds true for deformation. So for example, if we go in, I'll go ahead and lose the poly paint just to make that obvious. If we turn on deformation, turn off the wireframes, you'll notice that we do have the ability to actually paint deformation onto the model. And that in and of itself, again, is really interesting and very useful uh, in a number of different circumstances. However, when we go to exit out of the morphed UV, all that information goes away. So the information that Paul shared with me about the fact that the UV Master plugin is using a GOZI file and that has some additional options to it, it kinda got me thinking. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, at what can be done with this. We'll go ahead and jump back over to the cloned version. This is our low res object and if we go into the UV Master plugin again we'll notice that we can flatten this out and we'll see our UV. 
okay, which is excellent. Now, one of the things that uh, first sort of got my attention is this is actually a 3D object. So we can actually move around this in space. We can zoom in, zoom out. And right off the bat, because this is a flattened piece of geometry, there's some very interesting things that this uh, allows us to do. One, if we want, is to simply go over to Document and use Z -app Link to port this over to Photoshop. We can then paint onto the object, paint a texture map for it, and bring it right back into ZBrush, and then apply either the texture to Poly Paint or the texture to the UV map, or we can apply it back as deformation using the displacement map option. So some interesting things that open up from that possibility. The truth is though we could do the same thing of Z app linking to Photoshop just by unwrapping the object uh, with the Morph UV option. So what makes this interesting uh, is the fact that if this is a, a GoZ object and if we've truly flattened this, which we have, not just morphed it, if we switch over to something like the move brush, we can now begin to actually edit the shape of our UVs. So this becomes very, very, very interesting to us as texture artists, as modelers, sculptors, the ability to now go in and adjust the UV map on your own is really very powerful. Now we can't separate polygons off into islands but we can at least go through and clean up and work with the mesh. And if we want to see how the deformation is actually, uh, or how the changes to our UV mesh are actually being applied to the textures, we can simply go down, because this is a 3D object, we can go down to the tool menu, open up the texture option, so let's find that, and then we'll pick one of the UV checkers. I'll go ahead and load one of those in real quick, and we'll get that applied to the object. <laughs> then we'll pull it into the texture palette and apply it to the mesh. So you can now begin to see how the deformation is actually applied to the object. And we can keep this on and begin to maneuver our mesh and you can see the stretching effect happening in real time. So that in and of itself is quite interesting and opens the door for some very interesting possibilities. Let's go ahead and turn that off though and I'm just gonna go back to UV Master since I don't want to keep these deformations. I'll unflatten the object and then I'll unwrap again. That should restore the, uh, the UV to its prior state. Ooh, let's go ahead and repaint some of those control lines. So let's go back to control painting. We'll attract. There we go. And let's unwrap again. And then we'll turn on flatten. Great.